Hi everyone, welcome. So in this video, I want to talk about something very interesting about principal components. First of all, as a refresh here, I have the code to build the principal components from scratch. First of all, you standardize your data, you compute the average, you compute the standard deviation, and then this is the formula for you to standardize the data. First step is to compute the covariance matrix from your data. And then from there, you can compute the eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and then you want to project your data X onto the eigenvectors. And the way to do that is to use the MP dot function. And what that is, it's a dot product. So there you go, that's really what it is. And then let's take a look at the toy data. Here's the toy data. What's interesting thing about this video is I was actually asked the following question. The question is, if I have X1, X2, X3, and these are all the features in the original data, how do we use the results from principal component to try to pinpoint that X such that it is very different from the other? Perhaps it's the most important one. So we all know that the principal component is the methodology that is used to project data onto another plane such that it can have a highest variance explained or as most variance explained as possible from the data. And here we have X1, X2, X3. We can obviously see that X2 carries a lot of variance as high as 100. And that's much higher than the other two variables. So hopefully, so the goal of this video is trying to walk through the following method to see if we can pinpoint X2. First step is to compute the covariance matrix. Now you can do it without the standardized data or you can do it with the standardized data. Let me try both. So first, let me try do it without the standardization. So I run that code and this will give me eigenvalue, eigenvectors, as well as the principal component. From there, what I can do is I can look at the feature importance. Here I have X1, X2, X3, and then I have a for loop to print out the loadings of each of the X1, X2, X3 from principal component one. And that is the first principal component, which also supposed to be the principal component that explains the most of the variance. And we can see from the magnitude of these loadings from principal component one, that X2 has the highest loadings because this value is much higher than the other two. So we print out the sentence, we say, okay, X2 is probably the most important, but this is just from one loadings, right? Here we have one principal component. What if I could take a look at the eigenvalues and use those as weights to apply on these loadings across all principal components. And then perhaps I could get the final count of X1, X2, X3 to see which one is most important. I already went through that exercise and it turned out that in here, what you need is this NP.ABS, that means absolute value. So that's what I did. Here I have this dot product that take all the absolute values from the eigenvector and I round it by three. And I just do a dot product on the eigenvalues. So this eigenvalues serve as a weight, and then it gives weights further on the loadings over these eigenvectors. So I work out that math, and then I put them in a panda data frame, and it gives me this nice small table, which I can see, aha, the values for X2 is much higher. Uh, so this way, if you want, you can take a look at this table and be like, okay, X2 has a much higher value than the other two, then perhaps this X2 explains most of the variance. So that's where the idea is coming from. And I've not seen math prove that this is always the case, but this is just what my gut feeling says. So obviously this video is out there subject to criticism. Now let's go back to the toy data and let's change these numbers a little bit. Let me change this to one and then let me change X3 variance to 100. Now from this toy data, you can see the variance for X3 is now the largest. So you go through this exercise without changing any code. And this is the only place that I changed. And in the end of the code, it better say X3 is the most important. So let's try that. I'm going to run through that. And then here, I'm going to run through this version without the standardization. So I'm going to run that. And then I'm going to go down here. I'm going to check out the feature importance. I'm going to look at the first loadings from principal component one. And boom, there you go. Now you see this value 0 0.999. That's much larger than the R2 happen to be on X3. And that's because we change the data. In the beginning, we just change the data, specifically we change the variance to be the largest. And that makes sense because now that carries the most of the variance in the data. So that's a unique one that we want. You go through the rest of the table, you see ah, X1, X2, X3, put them in the table. 
let me run this code. Boom, boom, boom. And then here you see, okay, the value for X3 is the highest because this is 11,000 and it's way bigger than 24, it's way bigger than one. So I think this works intuitively and we also have some sort of empirical evidence to show that this formula will give you the highest feature weights, not just on principal component, not just on the first principal component, but also on the original features, X1, X2, X3, so on and so forth. But here's a caveat. Typically, we say that the principal component works the best on standardized data, right? Before you do your principal component analysis, you want to standardize your data, you want data to be normalized, that sort of thing, which is the common practice. What I do find is if that is the case, you may actually damage the importance result. So here, let me standardize this. I'm going to run this chunk of code. I'm not going to run this because this does not use the standardized data, whereas this snippet of code uses the standardized data, X standardized, when it computes the covariance matrix. And then when it does the projection, it uses the standardized data, not the original X, okay? So I'm gonna run this, and then I'm gonna go down there, run my importance setting. So I'm gonna run that. Now here, it actually says X1 happened to be the most important because the C7, that's the higher magnitude than the other two. So let's take a look at the data. See, this damages the feature importance, right? Because that is no longer the case. So we clearly see X3 has a higher number on the variance, but that's not what we saw here. Here, we actually see that according to this loadings from first principal component, this actually says X1. And then we can also run through the rest of the code to see if this formula still holds. So to my surprise, this formula actually still holds because if you see here, 1.4, 1.6, 1.7, but clearly 1.7 has the largest value and that's on X3 and that's precisely correct. If you look at the toy data, you actually see that X3 turned out to be the one with a higher variance. So that being said, what I wanna say in this video is, I believe this works. And if you just run this code from the results from principal component analysis, you will be able to obtain the important features simply based off the linear additive nature from principal component analysis. And this is able to give you the correct answer. And here, correct means that it gives you the feature in the original data with the highest variance. So hopefully this video helps you think about PCA a little bit more in depth. And I'll see you in the next video.